we were one of two virtuals that began back in 2008. And we started with uh, the first year we had 900 students. And of course, we've grown each year and we now have, you know, over 4,500 students. Our teachers are highly trained, highly effective. Uh, and you can just see that with the evidence of our test scores. We were the number one virtual school in South Carolina with our academic aids. And we were in the top 15% of all schools in the state of South Carolina for middle school ELA and in the top 25% of all schools in math. Last year's graduating class outperformed our local district in math, biology, and U.S. history on the EOC. Um, we were also the top virtual school in the Institute in U.S. History EOC. And then finally, we improved our graduation rate by 33% since 2018-2019 school year. Um, that was a rate change of 74%. The Our school was in the top 30% in ELA and top 30% of all schools in the state in math also. Very proud of that. The numbers that we had, because we had close to 2,000 elementary students last year and close to that this year also. What we do is we bring in a lot of other tools for our teachers to use, various different websites, various different programs um, to help them with technology and to uh, make sure that they are hitting those standards. A lot of the individualized instruction, that is where they learn to read. And of course, we do have to have the learning coach support backing up the teacher with the instruction. But at South Carolina Virtual Charter School, we have live instruction. It's very traditional. I mean, I, related to a brick and mortar where it is live instruction and then they have assignments and stuff like that, so. Right now we have the MTSS method that we follow very strictly. That child is on the radar, we meet, then they get um, intervention help from interventionists that we have hired also to provide extra reading or math instruction and then we follow through very many 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 meetings with the parent to explain to them where we are and if that child needs it then we have a very strong special education program. It's very much like the typical day of a student in a brick and mortar school. Our students uh, will wake up in the morning and um, get ready for their 8.30 a.m. class. They follow a traditional class schedule, um, typically taking about four classes a day with us. Um, those classes are um, 90 minutes in length, typically, unless they, they're in a year-long class, and then those are hour-long classes. And, um, and like I said, it's just a, a typical day. You know, they, they have live instruction with their teachers, they log into their live classes, and, um, and engage in some very engaging lessons online. And then they have time also in the day to work on their online classwork. In middle school, all of our students are part of a team. They have the same four core teachers as well as their guidance counselor. And then we have some interventionists as well who are part of that team, um, as well as myself and the parent. And so uh, and that team approach, I think, is what helps our students be so successful because our teachers know those students so well. I think the team approach that we have, it's the parents, the students, the teachers. Everyone's involved with the, that, the whole needs of the child. You know, I'm fortunate that I live in a school district that has amazing schools that, that work for my children, but not everybody has that option. And so the fact that we can provide high quality education, we can provide uh, high quality teachers and instruction to students no matter where they live in the state is so important. Well, it's the flexibility that it can give if, if students need it but also is the engagement and the interaction that they have with the teachers as well. We've got a, a wide variety of, of reasons why kids come and, and why they're successful. It's amazing. Uh, the, our kids go to a two-year school, a four-year school where they finish. Uh, they get scholarships. So they, we, we're pretty, pretty doggone good in, in getting kids where they need to be. That's number one priority for us. Make sure we have teachers and on the camera that know what they're doing, that are effective, and that can engage kids and, and, and make them come and return. A child never has a substitute that is not a certified teacher in our program. Um, and when a teacher is out, we can absorb that class. So we never miss a day of instruction. And I think that is one of our big points for our school is that there is instruction each day that child's supposed to be in school. 
we're just going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to move that needle that we're always being encouraged to do. Um, we're going to, to improve our students' learning as they continue to go through our grades. We have seen that students who stay with us are more successful uh, as time goes on. And so we're just going to encourage those families to continue to stay with us and let us uh, get their children all the way to graduation. I think that providing a virtual option is um, meeting the needs of those students for whom a brick and mortar traditional um, setting is not necessarily um, appropriate or, or meeting their needs. And so I, I think that everyone has the right to that choice. Everyone has the right to determine that another setting is more appropriate for their students. And um, SEVCS is just um, a, an amazing option for those, those parents and those students who feel that virtual is an option or should be an option for them. It gives people an option. It gives, gives them another alternative to a brick and mortar environment. But, but the nice part about it, it's a public school. And so that's, that, that's the beauty of it. So you got best of both worlds, so to speak. So it's, um, it's a wonderful option for, for kids that, that need that type of instructional program.